Hello and welcome back to another episode of Straightforward Tanks, a video series in which I show you how to paint your tanks using straightforward brush techniques and regular acrylic paints. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to paint the Flames of War Bridges tanks in a desert camouflage scheme, and I'll be using the Army Painter range of paints to do so. After assembling your miniature, the first task is to prime it. Now, I'm going to be using the Army Painter Skeleton Bone Spray Primer for this because it gives us the sandy color that we want to achieve in the final product. Now, once you've primed it, the first task is to dry brush on some matte white over the surface. Now, dry brushing basically involves putting a small amount of paint on your brush, removing the excess, and lightly brushing it over the surface of your tank. This will bring out the hard edges and rivets and really enhance the detailing across the tank. The next step is to paint the green areas of camouflage on the tank. For this, we're going to be using Crypt Wraith. Now you'll notice that the first thing I'm doing here is actually painting out the lines that signify the edges of the green camo section. I find this easier to do than painting in a single block as you know exactly where the camo is going to be before you actually start adding in large amounts of paint. With the lines completed, we can now start filling them in with the Crypt Wraith. Now I'd recommend mixing in some water with your paint here. This will have two effects. First of all, it'll make it a lot easier to apply over the surface. And it'll also mean that you can actually apply the paint in several thin layers, which will give you the best coverage possible once it's dry. With the block colors of paint achieved, the next step is to start bringing out some of the detailing in the green areas. Now, unlike before, we can't simply just dry brush this detailing on. We have to apply it with a brush in case we overspill onto the sand colored areas. With just a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush, you just want to lightly dab the paint onto any of the areas on the tank which have detailing around the green blocks of camouflage. With the bulk of the armor completed, the next step is start focusing on some of the stowage items across the miniature. Now I'm going to be painting any tow cables or any metal sections of the tools along the miniature using Necromancer Cloak. Again, just want to use a small brush for this, with just a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush and very carefully paint over these sections. Continuing with the sewage, the next task is to paint any of the wooden items, and for this I'll be using Oak Brown. Again, just use a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush to lightly paint some of the thin handles and other wooden items across the miniature. The final area of the tank we'll be painting before we move on to weathering will be the tracks themselves, and for this I'm using Gunmetal as it's a really nice dark metallic colour. Now when painting with metallics, you need to be exceptionally careful not to overspill onto the areas you've already painted, as it can be quite difficult to overpaint them once they've spilled over. So to avoid this, I would recommend using a thin brush, using just a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush, and really taking your time. With all of the base coating completed, we can now move on to weathering the tank. Now I'm going to be starting off with a wash of soft toning across the entirety of the tank. Now this is quite a mild color and just basically dirty up the surface, as well as pulling into the recesses and really bringing out those details. Now personally, I would recommend mixing in one part soft toning to one part water, painting over the entirety of the tank with that mixture, and then allow it to dry thoroughly. Then if you feel that the tank is not quite dark enough for what you want, you can then go over it again with another watered down mixture of soft tone ink. But if you do this, I would recommend just focusing more into the recesses of the tank itself. With the soft tone ink wash completed, you can see the tank looks a lot more detailed now. We're going to be enhancing this detail using some chipping effects. Now again, I'm going to be using Necromancer Cloak for this. And instead of using a regular brush, I'll instead be applying the chipping using a sponge. So you just want to dip the sponge into a small amount of Necromancer Cloak and then lightly dab it across the surface of the tank, targeting it mainly on areas where you would imagine wear and tear would take place. The final step in painting our tank is to apply yet another wash. This time I'll be using strong toning, but instead of applying it across the entirety of the tank like we did in the previous step, this step will be a lot more targeted. So using the strong tone ink, you want to focus this wash into the recesses and around the tracks of the tank. If you're feeling adventurous, you could even use this to create some streaking grime by applying a small amount into a crevice and then lightly dragging the brush downwards to create the effect of oil that has dripped down the surface of the tank. And here we have the completed M3 Lee or Grant tank painted in the British World War II Desert Camo Scheme. Now whilst this tutorial focused on one particular tank, you could apply the exact same colours and techniques to any British tanks used in the mid-war desert theatre. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below, while subscribing to be kept up to date with all of my future content. You can also find out what I'm currently working on by checking out both my Instagram and Facebook pages, which you can find links to in the description below. And finally, if you'd like to support me in making future tutorials, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which has really helped me in producing future videos. So until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.